Hi everyone, it's Mindy and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you some examples of cards that I created with the Alta New July 2019 stamp die and stencil release. Now I don't have everything out of the release, so I'll be featuring just some of the products. I will have everything listed over on my blog and that'll be linked down below in the video description. And these are the cards that I'm going to start with today. This first stamp set is called Bright Blossoms. It's a four by six stamp set. It also has a coordinating die that you can purchase as well. And then in the all to new stamps, there is a booklet for you that you can reference. I like to show these in the videos because I think they are a great tool to have. This just shows you some examples to get you started and also how these stamps can layer together. For the first example, I'm going to be creating a my own background, my own patterned background. I'm going to start out with my lightest color, which is Mountain Mist. And I put my first stamp set, this is the first layer, I just put that on an acrylic block. I found this is a lot easier to do these backgrounds like this with an acrylic block. And this was a very easy image to line up. So I'm going to stamp this randomly across my cardstock. I'm going to do all of the first layers first. So I have just a few of them that I'll place around. And I do personally like the bigger ink pads because it doesn't take as long to ink up the stamp set. But I do have the minis here, which are a great affordable option if you wanted to try out some of the alt new inks. And I love using clear box blocks when it comes to this. Now, I don't normally like to stamp with clear blocks only because I'm so scared of messing up. That is why I love using some sort of stamping tool. But this image was so easy to stamp. And if you notice, I am stamping on a new stamping mat from Alta New. This is a silicone mat. This is a newly released. I am really loving working on it. You could see it has the grid pattern here. It is a 12 by 16 mat and it does stick to your surface. So it's got the grid mat on the front and then on the back side is just a plain white. It also has inches and metric for measurements. And you can do practically anything on this mat. You can do your ink blending, water coloring, heat embossing, and you can see this is really helping my stamping. Like I said, I don't normally use acrylic blocks, but once my stamp was conditioned, it is stamping these images beautifully. I don't have to worry about double stamping anything. So next I'm coming in with some of the leaves off of this stamp set. I'm stamping that first layer in Firefly. And then the second layer, which is just adding like the stems in the middle, I'll be doing that with Shadow Creek. So just filling in some of those areas with the greenery, a couple different ones off of the stamp set, making sure to also stamp off of my card. I will be trimming it down, but I do like to have them off of the card just in case I decide to leave it one layer. This piece of cardstock is just a uh, white four and a quarter by five and a half inch Nina Solar White cardstock, and this is 80 pound. And next I'm coming in, I'm just going to fill in a little bit of those areas yet. I brought in another smaller flower that's on the stamp set. It's really cute and tiny and delicate. This is such a fun stamp set. I did do some more stamping off screen uh, with these same colors and then also with some coral colors that I'll be using on a card in uh, a little further down in the video. Now these cards that I'm creating today are also part of a blog hop that is going on right now with Altenew. So I'm very excited to be a part of that. There's also some giveaways over there. So be sure to head to my blog and check out that information as well. Now I'm just finishing up a couple little leaves here and there that I wanted to add and then adding their layer in the inside. And I wanted to show you quick, this is the Mega Greetings 4 stamp set, and I love these Mega Greetings. They have so many great, simple sentiments on here. This is using the Mega Hope die, so this is a word die you can purchase separately. I love how they take up an entire card front. You can keep your backgrounds or your cards simple and just use these dies to cut the words out. I did line that up in the center of my card, held that in place with some purple tape, and ran that through my die cut machine. So that's going to cut it out and I'm, it's so fun to be able to create 
two cards from one. And that is what I wanted to do with this card. So I will have the main part, the card base with all of that pattern background, and then the die cut word. So I'll be finishing off the both of these cards here. I'm taking that hope die and I'm actually going to die cut it. Uh, you're seeing four, but I do run it through five times. And I'm going to layer them up for dimension to use on my two cards. I do find this is really easy to layer them together with just some liquid glue and some tweezers. The hope with the pattern on it, I did layer two white pieces behind it. And then for my other card, where I'm using, uh, is it the negative space of it? Sorry, I never remember which way to call it. I'm just adding some adhesive behind that. I didn't want much more dimension because my word is going to have dimension. So I'm adding this to a card front that I had already created. And you could leave it just like this, but like I said, I wanted to have a little bit more dimension. So I do have one here. This is three layers of white cardstock stacked together. And I'm going to put that right into that negative space. Now you can notice at the top there, I did save those inside parts. So I'm just going to put some liquid glue and attach those in there for a more complete look. To add a little bit of sparkle to the card, I'm just taking a Nouveau Shimmer Pen and I'm adding that over my Hope. And you can see there at the top, I did go ahead and heat and boss a sentiment. That is off the Mega Greetings 4 stamp set that I did on black cardstock with white embossing powder. And then I'm just adding some black foam squares to the back of that. And I'll layer it right over my word there, just at the bottom of the P. And that'll finish off that card. So then next we'll work on our second card out of this with the patterned Hope die cut. Now before I attach it to my white cardstock, I need to line up my sentiments because otherwise it would be really hard to stamp that with the dimension. So I'm going to use a couple of the sentiments off of the Mega Greetings 4 stamp set line that up where I want them to go. Just make sure they're really straight. And then I'm going to use the Ulta New Obsidian Black ink. And this is such a wonderful ink. Really, really crisp black ink that I use. And then I can take the liquid glue and attach that patterned hope right in between my sentiments. So there were two cards that we created just out of the one background. Really great packs a lot of punch and I just finished off this one with some Nouveau Shimmer as well. And then here's a look at both of these cards which I'll have uh, more pictures on my blog if you want to take a look at those. Next we're going to be doing some watercoloring so I really had fun with this. I'm still fairly new to watercoloring and this is such a great simple technique to do. Very easy to accomplish and you can really mass produce. I actually made quite a few of these backgrounds because it was so easy. So I am using the Ulta New watercolors, and this is just some watercolor cardstock. I'm taking, it's a thick brush. I apologize, I don't know the size of this brush offhand, but I did wet it fairly well, dipped it into some of the watercolors. You can pick any colors that you want, and I'm just swishing that back and forth, and I'm making sure to kind of flick up when it's at the end, so it gives it more of a realistic brush look. Now, if you want to try this, I do recommend doing it this way like I am the green. I am starting with the mid-tone color in the middle of the cardstock. That will just ensure uh, your spacing will be pretty even. I didn't do it on the other ones. I only did it on this green because that's when I remembered it. But if you start in the middle, you're going to have it more evenly spaced. So once again, just picking up some of that color, rinsing off in between to switch colors, this one you could see is different than the one I have pictured because I do remake my cards for videos and I really love this color combination as well. Next, I'm gonna create an entire panel uh, with an ombre look. So I just have some purples, uh, a dark pink here, and then a light pink and kind of blending that together just so it has a smooth transition. And what I wanted to show you here is that I'm going to dry my cardstock to add another layer. So you can uh, heat emboss in this or dry your cardstock on top of these silicone mats. It is great for that. And then I can come back in and add some more color. And that's just going to really brighten that background up. And then once it does dry, I do trim this down uh, into a smaller panel to add to the card front. 
So here are some of those watercolor backgrounds that we're now going to turn into cards. I know it doesn't look like much at first, but when you add the sentiment and some elements, it really pulls it together. This stamp set that I'm using is a two by three stamp set. It is called Something Wonderful, and I really loved the placement of it. So what I'm doing is I'm actually taking that acetate off that has the words on it. So I'm just going to carefully peel that up. Now my stamp set has been used quite a few times, so it's not as sticky. But what I'm going to do is, since it has the acetate underneath, I'm going to line that up where I want it to go on my card, and then I can close the door and pick it up. It's going to be perfectly aligned, those branches underneath. It's just like it came on the stamp set, and I loved it just the way it was. So this was a little trick that I figured out so you can keep that perfect placement. And then once you pick the stamp set on the door of your stamping tool, you can just remove that acetate. And then I'm using the Obsidian Black ink to stamp those. Now I do have to stamp this a few times only because it is watercolor cardstock, which is textured, and I also watercolored on it. So it takes a little bit more uh, to get that stamped on there. So I'm going to show that trick to you one more time with one of the other ones. I had to rearrange my stamp set because my brush strokes weren't in the same spot on this card as they were on the other. So I'm just positioning that back onto that acetate sheet that has the outlines on them. So I'm lining them up as perfect as I can get them because like I said, I loved the placement that it came on. And then I'll put the clear acetate back on top just like I would if I had pulled it right out of the package. And then once I just kind of give that a good push, I'll flip that over and I'm going to remove that acetate that has the words on it. And then this way I can just shift this and move this around on my panel where I want those words to be. Since that sticky side is up, I can close the door and just pick that right up and then remove the clear acetate. So I hope that little trick uh, helps you when you're lining up stamp sets and you really like the placement uh, like they came in the package. And then once again, just stamping it a couple times for a really good crisp black to stand out against those watercolor backgrounds. Now this is the Crystal Frames 6x8 stamp set. This is just a really gorgeous stamp set. I'm going to use one of the sentiments on here for one of my watercolor backgrounds. So once again, this one is just making sure you're lining it up straight. And I'll use that Obsidian Black ink again to stamp that down. And I'm going to set that off on the side for just a moment. This is the Geometric Frames die. And you'll notice that the ones on the right hand side have uh, a frame in there. You'll see when I die cut it, but it's going to cut out a little skinny frame. So I'm going to die cut all of these from gold cardstock. The other ones that were on the left hand side just cut out the shape. I wanted the actual frame. So once I ran those through my die cut machine, I'm just carefully popping those out and you could see what a thin, delicate frame this is. These are really, really gorgeous and they were so pretty on the cards. So here's a look at all of those. So here is a trick I learned to be able to line those frames up on your cards. I'm going to use this shape from the stamp set. It was in the top corner. I'm going to line that up over a sentiment that I just stamped on some white cardstock. Pick that up with the door of my Misty, and now I'm going to come in with the gold pigment ink from All to New. And you could leave this as is using the gold pigment. I didn't push real hard. I didn't worry about a deep impression of it because I'm just using it as a guide. So definitely could leave it. But what's really awesome is that these thin frames line up perfectly with this. And that is why I used the gold pigment ink, because once we line these up, we're not even going to see them. Even if I was off a little bit, it's still going to be gold versus a black outline underneath. So I'm just figuring out the placement of where these would go, and then I can start attaching them to the card front. And I'll just use little dabs of liquid glue. I kind of pat it with my finger a little bit, just make sure there's not too much glue in those areas. You could also use a spray adhesive if that is your preference of glue. But I found the liquid glue worked just as well and it does have a really great hold. 
So I'll just continue to layer these up. And like I said, these are just gorgeous around these sentiments. I would love to do some more in different colors of glitter cardstock. I'm kind of obsessed with glitter cardstock, so that would be my personal choice. And then just making sure to push those down really well. You could also add an acrylic block on top of it once you're done just to make sure that they're all stuck down really well since we are layering these on top of each other. Now these were some of the extra flowers that I had stamped earlier from the Bright Blossoms stamp set. I just trimmed off a little bit of that leaf to line up with the edge of the frame and then I'm going to attach the flowers and I am going to use some white foam squares to both of these just to give it a little bit of dimension. And even though this is one of the cleanest cards I think I have ever done, I think it is one of my favorites. I loved the colors, I loved these frames, and that sentiment is just beautiful. So then once I finish this off, we'll take a look at some of the other cards that I had created. Now this next one is the ombre background that I created. I just trimmed that down to a thin panel and added to the card front and then also added those thin frames around these sentiments. So easy to do and they're just so beautiful. I love how they're artistic looking. It's just kind of something really fun and different to do. I will have all the supplies listed down below in the video description and also on my blog as well. And if you enjoyed videos and would like to see more from me, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and then be sure to click the little bell so you're notified of when new videos are released. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.